Hello and welcome to Kabashed. Today I got a pretty special installment for you. I just, I just right now finished um, this um, this clone custom. As you all know, this is Bakara. It's one of my favorite designs, and I uh, quite like the way it turned out. I'm first going to give you guys a spin around how the figure looks like, but I have some videos in the back. For those who want to get a little bit more detail, I'll showcase some of the steps that I took towards finishing this, this, this custom. So without further ado, let me just show you how this thing looks like. So this is a close up and um, the head is actually a custom uh, epoxy resin sculpt from again 3D Camino facility. Yeah, 3D Camino facility. Sorry man. 3D Camino facilities. Yes, that's it. So, uh, from my understanding, I think that um, I think that this is the blaster that he uses um, during the Revenge of the Sith, and the Kama is made from uh, spray paint leather, as usual. Um, and then I have the special pieces in the back that is actually uh, that's actually. Um, part of Bacaro's design and you could see in the helmet over here I put some weathering in there although throughout the figure I actually decided to just keep it pretty clean um, but um, so I'm going to move on to some of the stuff that I took and um, I actually took some working progress videos so I hope you guys like it Okay, so this is my humble setup over here, and what you notice is that for the base body, I'm gonna go with the Lieutenant um, Phase One's Clone Trooper, which I actually stripped previously, but now I'm actually gonna use it for the base of this. Of course, I have the head sculpt, and as you guys could tell, this is the resin sculpt. I did some cleaning up, although in the back over here, I decided to kind of just leave it alone because you're not going to really see this, so it's okay. Uh, I have a spare belt I have from uh, Commander Wolf figure that, as you know, um, Bakara actually have extra fittings in the back, which are essentially parts from a regular clone belt. I have a pauldron that came from a black series First Order Stormtrooper. Uh, I'm not in love with the First Order Stormtrooper, so I'm happy to sacrifice this for essentially the shoulder pauldron um, and pieces on the shoulder. And as you could, um, and as you all know, um, this plastic in the past I actually has been proven to stick well onto this um, the, the the Black Series plastic. So I'm going to use it for that. So the first thing I'm going to do with this, before I do anything with it, is to drill the hole that will enable me to switch the head onto here. So what I'm going to be do doing is I'm going to put a Dremel through this. I'm going to grind it and essentially uh, I'm choosing to do this first and foremost because last thing I want to do is I'm going to paint it and make it all perfect and then when I'm trying to squeeze this thing and you know kind of wrestle my way into here that it's going to um, start smearing with finger paint, fingerprints and all those nasty stuff and then end up ruining it so I'm going to first um, I'm going to first um, drill it and make sure I machine it everything is fine before proceeding any further so wish me luck okay so this is what I ended up with over here so I have grinded this out on the inside until it is wide enough for it to receive this little joint over here and it turns out quite nice actually and my next step it's basically to uh, first actually wash this with a light soap and water and then um, and then from there I would then put the first coat of primer onto it to give it the first white coat okay so this is good 
uh, I wait for a day for it to kind of cure and hence I came up with this over here I think it should be cured pretty well my next move is then to uh, tape this up and I'll show you how I do it and then be able to isolate certain parts for further spray painting As you can see, these two cheeks are the ones that I really want to get into. Um, but then, in the end, I've taped up the edges. Now, uh, for these spots that I don't really need to be so precise, I just go in with a bigger piece. So here we go. This is what I'll end up with. Like this. Okay, so this is the progress so far. As you can tell, I've used the black primer. This is so that I could get in all these nooks and crannies in the black. And then later on, when I hit it with a light, um, light gray, that there's certain parts that the light gray might actually hit because of the angle and whatnot. We might create a, a kind of a happy accent when, it, when there's a certain type of uh, shading that will go on. Uh, hard to explain, but uh, hopefully it'll work out and I'll show it to you once it's done. Okay, now this is the best part. So, as I said before, I've sprayed in black primer, and then when I go in with the light gray, I purposely sprayed it on a certain direction, so as to these parts are, you can tell there's a slight uh, shadow in there. So the best part, this is the best part, when you actually rip this the tape off. This is the moment of truth. Now, before I go on, uh, I also like to say while I had this tape, I went ahead and actually sprayed on a matte, um, a matte clear coat over this. The reason is because once, um, once I rip this part, you'll notice that the helmet itself is actually um, shiny. And I want to have different, um, different shininess reflectiveness in this helmet so this one I want to have a silver matte finish and that's why I just went ahead and just and, and just clear coated before uh, I ripped the, the tape off so here you go this is the best part I just have to find how, what goes in here So this is what I have so far. Uh, I think I've done a neater job, but right now it's a uh, helmet looks a bit clean right now, and I'm not going to do uh, a lot of um, either sh using a shoe shine or, or or whatever grease people use to uh, to rough it up. All I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to do a very light coat, um, light dab of sponge which would, which would give it a kind of a, uh, a, a a worn paint type of um, type of feel to it I don't want this thing to look completely like it was dragged through mud so uh, I'll just do uh, I'll just do that sponge thing and I'll show you how it's done I'm not very good working with camera over here so I might just do one little spot first and then the rest I will uh, do on separately on the side so what it is, is I took a piece of sponge, took it black, 
and basically just dry it. Dab it until it's completely dry, right? I mean, I'm talking about this a bit, even that's a bit too much. I want it to be barely registered. So now it's about, it's about right. And then I'm going to dab it in here, like so. Ooh, that's a little too much already. But it might look good as a scratch, see it? See, you're starting to get these type of uh, scratch, so-called scratch marks on there. So I'm going to do the rest um, on the side. Otherwise, I'm going to screw it up and I'm going to be very mad at myself. So over here, you see that I kind of went over the edges a little bit. On top over here, I got another thing that looks kind of like a scratch. I'm okay with it. I'm not in love with it, but you know, it might actually work out in the end. And as you can see, there are some little spots here and there that shows a little bit where uh, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to go the rest with um, with uh, the, the panel lining pen. So I use the panel liner. I use the gray one, the dark gray one, and a black one. This is the dark gray one, so I use it to kind of go over the edge over here in places that get a little bit dinged up over here. See that? And I start going in there really, really, really lightly. I'm going to use it very sparingly because what ends up happening is if you overcook it, then you actually don't destroy the scale of it. And remember, you want this thing to look like um, look like a worn armor in scale. If you destroy the scale, what will end up happening is that uh, our, uh, little skin thing going on over here. But anyways, if you see it, um, if you, you want to look, make it look like toy. Uh, I mean, it looks like an armor in scale. Because otherwise, it will end up looking like, like a broken toy uh, with chipped off paint. And you don't want it to have that to happen. So, again, very sparingly around these edges. So, it's end of today's session over here. What I did was uh, then I went in the back over here and I painted that back detail in silver. This is so far what I ended up with. And I sprayed also gloss varnish on it just to kind of uh, keep the colors in place. So uh, this is pretty much it with the head. Uh, my next session is going to be on the body, putting on the strap, the comma, and so on and so forth. So, uh, that's going to be for the next session. Okay, so this is uh, what I have so far, right? So I've been showing you how I'm doing the head. Uh, this came out, I think, pretty okay. And um, this is the body that I'm using. What I'm going to do is this. Um, I'm going to... Um, what's left to do is the comma, which I took a piece of leather and then I pretty much first sprayed it with a white primer and then um, and then I went in with the maroon color that you can see before here and then lastly I took a clear coat and then I just sprayed on to it. Um, this particular comma is actually uh, not that difficult. There's actually no patterns involved so it's about just sizing it right, uh, mocking it up and uh, making sure everything is um, is dandy before I go on um, and then over here there's the comma and also the shoulder strap that comes down here the shoulder pauldron a little shoulder piece over here which I'm planning to use uh, in a combination of you know taking these type of plastic and I'm going to cut it up and then I'm going to shape it as you see later and then I'm going to use um, the plow plates to use the strap and then finally let's put the head on there yep as I could tell this is going to be quite messy over here I'm trying to wrap my head around this I took a spare piece of leather just to kind of mock it up the size before I actually go in um, with this and do the actual thing so yeah I'm going to split this down the middle and then I'm going to, uh, let's see, maybe I'll just have a tab that goes on the inside over here and 
Uh, see how I can finagle this because this is getting a little bit tricky over here. But no need to worry. Let me figure this out and then I'll show you my next step. As I've suspected, it's going to be a major pain in the butt. So what I did was actually do these tabs over here. One in the middle, one on the side. Um, so then I slip it in there and then I got it up here and I dab the glue in there, have it soak through and then have this stay here. Um, it, it's already, you could tell that it's not really gluing so well. It's not like really uh, like one of those things that is a tight fit. So um, I might have to try different glues or different formula to make it stick better. Um, but right now it's, it's proving to be a challenge because I think that uh, it's definitely not an instant bonding. Uh, I might have to wait for a little bit and see how it goes, or uh, just, yeah, maybe just try to inform you. Okay, so it's finally on. Um, I think I did an okay job. Uh, what I did was I used the leather version of Crazy Glue. I think the Alpha Glue or something like that. And, um, and basically, I just kind of dabbed it around the side over here. It's not the best fit. It's not the best adhesion, but I, what I'm hoping for is that these tabs, because there's so much pressure on here, uh, took me, I, I used a tweezer and just kind of shoved it in there. And I, uh, I hope that over time it's going to gain some adhesion and, um, and I'm going to be able to have this pretty much well, well stuck on. So, um. Yeah, I, I don't like doing commas, to be honest. I think, you know, next time if I if I say I'm going to do another figure um, that has a comma, somebody please slap me because uh, I never enjoy doing a comma. It's always um, a big challenge to be able to do it. The only ones that I would be able to, that I would like doing is actually leather onto, onto model kit because that actually you use the cur uh, the, the the modeling cement and, and it sticks really really nicely uh, this one I don't know so only time will tell but for now it's stuck on pretty well it's not going anywhere right now I'm not going to force it I'm not going to articulate the legs too much right now I also don't like the way because of these armor I just don't like the way these, this, this stuff just kind of comes out over here but hey what can I do right and usually I do a, another black lining in here to kind of make it better but you know what in this particular case i'm just going to leave it alone um and i'm going to move on to the next thing okay so the next step what i did was i mocked it up with tape i kind of freehand it just to get a sense from the reference how this would actually all work so i'm going to then unravel it and i'm going to cut the pieces out but from what i'm seeing over here is um this is approximately how it look so I will, um, I would then go in and then um, do the pieces accordingly. All right, so <clears throat> I went in and uh, this is the piece that I was showing you before. I flattened it. And then I, uh, I then went in with the scotch tape and then I trace over it. And this is what I got, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm literally going to just take a scissor to this thing, you know, and do my best to cut it according to shape, All right? Okay, so with the straps over here, as you can tell, I actually just did my first one. Uh, the straps over here, I realized that this material actually sticks like a dream onto this type of plastic. The plow plates I've been using before, it's just a, kind of a hit or miss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest as much as possible over here and, uh, and be able to uh, make straps. I'm almost done over here. Um, last thing I need to do is take these pieces and chop them up and then be able to install it in the back over here and over here. I believe it's this piece and maybe one of these pieces. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so here goes the final shot. This is what I pretty much came out with. I'm quite happy with it. Although there are some challenges um, 
pertaining to how the comma gets attached but it still holds up pretty well um, no problem right there um, other than that there's a uh, some slight imperfection that I'm going to nitpick about such as the material I use to um, make these straps is actually uh, um, it's actually not very consistent um, thickness wise but I'm actually okay with it um, unless if you really look closely in it it's not going to it's not going to do much uh, damage <clears throat> so with the head um, as you can see I laid on some um, some minor rusting and uh, minor weathering over here. Um, I added the antenna there. I don't. I didn't bother to paint it silver because it's gray already. I think it's just fine the way it is right now. Um, this pollen piece, um, the shoulder piece, I actually glued it directly onto the shoulder as opposed to having the way it's usually portrayed to have this connected to the shoulder piece over here. But I'm okay with it because uh, because it's it, 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 it's okay with the illusion, particularly also when you have the head um, in a way you just don't want something to be attached over here. It's gone completely get in the way. So, anyways, um, one final spin. This is how it looks like in the back. The back. These things were added on. Um, the little extra pieces that Bacaro had. So this Commander Neo, and uh, and so here is an extra clone now to my collection. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm probably not gonna make another uh, as we go type of video because it's, uh, it's, it's very distracting, it's very hard for me to do. But I'm happy I at least get one out of the way. And I hope you guys enjoy this too. Okay, talk to you soon.